Okay, hi, this is Stu, and of course I'm here at the beautiful pa uh, Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Stu, and I'm here at the beautiful Pebble Valley, and I'm here again with Deepika Mehta. Fantastic. Hey. Lots of fun to be had. And we're going to be uh, looking at sort of everyday essentials, so Deepika's take on, on everyday essentials, things that you can do before practice or whenever you have time, which will help you open up your body in the right areas for the Ashtanga practice. Yeah. Um, before we start, I just want to say something to you. I want you to keep a real good eye on Deepika because <laughs> we had a comment on one of the videos and it said, it was a strength one, and it said, man is strong, that was me, <laughs> girl just talk, that was her. So, oh so if you see her just sort of not doing much, then yeah. you're going to have to sort of put the comments because I don't want to have to do all the work on these things. Oh my God, <laughs> okay, that's good. So how are we going to start? What are, we, what are you going to introduce um, us to? We're going to start with a few hip openers because I feel like because in the Ashtanga practice, especially primary series, there's a whole pattern of, you know, hip opening positions, yep. even in the standing poses, the external rotation of the hips. And I feel like if this is something that you're really limited in, it's kind of a big struggle, you know, the whole of the primary the series. The yeah. So I think this is stuff that has really helped me big time in the practice. Uh, for a while, I was really struggling with putting my leg behind the head, yep. as most normal people should be struggling with. Um, and I did these, this hip opening sequence for every day, uh, pretty much for two, three months. And this was when I was in Mysore and practicing with Sharat, and right. I was stuck on this pose called uh, Dvipada Shirshasana. That's both feet, I, both feet behind, behind the head. the head. And I did this little sequence every day for two or three months. And by the end of it, I could see a huge difference. difference. Yeah, I could see like, it was much easier for me to put the leg behind the nice. head. And were you doing it before you start your yeah. practice? Before you start practice? Well, I've got a bit of an obsessive personality. Right. <laughs> as everybody who does Ashtanga, I think. A little way that inclined. A yeah. little bit. So I would do it every morning also because it kind of relaxes your body and kind of sets a tone for you to have in the practice. It, uh, for me, I feel like it really makes you get very calm and grounded and relaxed. So then that's the energy you have in your practice rather yeah. than a very kind of hyper energy uh, and then sometimes if I had time I would do it in the afternoon you right. know because it's also like a really good sequence to do before sleeping okay it, again it just again, kind of calms you down yeah. yeah okay good yeah so you can start in a position like this like dandasan keeping your legs straight and then bring your left ankle under your right knee yeah and then place your right ankle in front of your left knee if you can slightly flex your feet but if you're feeling very tired and you just want to totally chill out, then just keep your feet totally relaxed. Mm -hmm. Stretch your hands up as you inhale. If you can, wrap your uh, palms in, so feel like your palms are looking towards each other. Extend your spine, sticking your hips out, and then reach forward. Thr ground through the index finger and thumb. Feel like you're pulling your chest forward. So have a little bit of a pulling action, extending the spine. So just look up a little bit halfway creating that extension and then on the exhale you can just flex your spine and drop down. Now depending on how you're feeling, if you're feeling very tired, you can just stay with a rounded spine, maybe keep a bolster or keep a pillow mm -hmm. and just stay in this kind of a more soft position for a minute or two. If you feel like you have more energy and you're ready for a little bit more active energy, what I like to do is I just keep my index finger and thumb also, it's a little bit of a shoulder warm-up, so wrapping the arms outward, trying to straighten the elbows. So you're rolling, like an yeah. we'd call that external rotation external of the shoulders. External rotation, wouldn't yeah. grounding through the index finger and thumb. Mm -hmm. Have a little pulling action, so spreading the collarbones, and then on the exhale, flexing. And I like to play between those two patterns on the inhale and exhale. So on the inhales, a little bit of internal extension. Feel like your pubic bone is stretching away from your belly button. On the exhales, feel like your sit bones are grounding. And just stay here for between 30 seconds to a minute. Mm -hmm. Connect to your breath. And just observe how with gravity, with your breath, the thighs start rolling outward and dropping down towards the ground. If you want to do this in the evening before sleeping, you can place a bolster, let the crown of the head or the forehead touch the ground, just so it really also relaxes your nervous system. 
And it doesn't matter if you're open enough, because some people, their knees will be off their feet, won't they? Yeah, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. And yeah. if you're actually resting on your feet, that's also fine. That's totally fine. Okay. So there are not so many rules. It's more like you want to create this kind of a square position. Mm -hmm. Also, if somebody has major knee problems, they can even place a bolster under here yeah. so that it's not putting too much pressure in the knee. Because if yes. you're holding it for a minute and you start feeling any sensations around here, you want to just keep a bolster so you're not afraid that, you know, anything could happen yes, to your knee. because as you come forward, it tends to put a little bit more pressure, pressure in here. Pressure in the knees. Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So the same thing on the other side. Try not to use your hands. Yeah, switch right ankle under left knee, left ankle in front of right knee. One more time, inhale, create a bit of space in your spine, extend up, exhale, reach forward, ground through the index finger and thumb, wrap the uh, upper arm outward, yet ground through the index, inhale, extend the spine, spread the collarbones, exhale, feel like you're pushing the earth away and dropping down. And just playing between those two patterns on the inhale. Feel like you're pulling the earth towards you, which extends your spine. On the exhale, focusing on the grounding action, as if you were pushing the earth away from you, dropping the sit bones into the earth. You can keep your breath totally relaxed, soft belly. Just allowing gravity to do most of the work. And then again, to come out of the stretch, inhale, extend your spine. For some people, this position is where they feel it, feel it deepest in the hips. You can stay here a little bit longer if you feel that it's going into the spot where you're the tightest. And then again, on the inhale, come up and release. So there's not really any specific rule. It's mm -hmm. kind of very dependent on your body, also dependent on how you're feeling internally. Like I said, if you feel like you need to calm your brain down, just allow your body to be more loose and relaxed. If you feel like you need to really f work on just specifically on the hips, a little bit of extension sometimes, you know, goes a bit more focus into the more hip focus. joints. So yeah. It's for those people, like we've come down quite low, but there will yeah. be some people that are sort of stuck here. Yeah, they can so just do this yeah. and feel like they're drawing their chest forward. Yeah. Once they feel like that can happen, then slowly walking down. Great. Maybe yeah. they can stay 30 seconds like this and then place two bolsters and 30 seconds just hang there. So then they relax. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. because I feel relaxation is a very important aspect for flexibility because if you're tending to hold a lot of tension, I feel like your body is going to do the opposite. You're you know? just fighting, fighting exactly. yourself. Exactly, so yeah. you want to find that balance between being a bit specific and also finding space for the breath and for some, you know, kind of... Um, Total release. Yep. Yeah. Nice. I'm pretty yeah. sure you do that when you're working with people. Right? Yeah, the same yeah. thing. You yeah. can't just brutalize too them. Hard. Even sometimes I do. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, you need to find that balance between those two. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So the second one is a little deeper. From the same stretch, you can bring your left ankle on your right knee. Yeah, perfect. For people, again, who have some kind of a knee problem, if they feel like this goes, you know, it uh, starts feeling too intense on your knee, they can just be like this, yeah, yeah, sit up tall, or they could even go down like this and just pull, yeah, whatever works. But the idea is you're creating that shape, yeah. And yeah. if you're gonna have them sitting up like this, do you prefer they sit back up against yeah. the wall? Yeah, they can sit up against the wall and try to mm. sit up tall, yeah, yeah. And then again, if this feels comfortable, then again, inhale, stretch the hands one more time, exhale. Ground through the index finger and thumb, pull your spine forward, feel like you're pulling in the lower back, stay here for a few moments, and then on the exhalation, slowly drop down. And try to take a moment to really visualize the, the hips, try to bring your mind-body connection into the hip joint, feel like you're breathing into the hips. And just setting <coughs> the intention with each exhale that the hips are sinking, releasing, letting go. Just staying there for a few moments. And then again on the inhale, stretch the spine forward. And then again, come up on an inhale, exhale, release. 
and then we switch to do the same thing on the other side see if you can do it without hands right ankle on left knee left ankle under right knee either just stay with this if you feel too much pressure in the knee or if it feels comfortable extend forward one more time create a little bit of an extension of the spine pushing the hips back yeah, and then only exhale let the hips ground into the earth and try to stay there for 20 to 30 seconds keep coming back to the breath Feel like the breath is going into your hip joint. One more time, after around 30 seconds, extend the spine, come all the way up, and then release. Does that feel good? Yes. But you yeah, have yeah. pretty good hips already. I like this posture, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, and that's... And do you, do you go to the different angles? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like to play around with this, so I feel like it's important to have some rules and then to explore in what feels come good mm. for your body. Mm. So this would be the ideal position and then I would like, you know, it's good to kind of walk around yeah. because when you go into this spot, for some people it's kind of specific into where they yeah. need to open up. So they can walk around a little bit to the left. It also gives you a really nice stretch in your lats and mm. in your obliques. To the left, hold it there for a few seconds and then to the right and try to feel like you're lifting, stretching out of the hip. So yeah, I like to nice. go a little bit to the left mm. and right and uh, just feel into the spot where you can really, you know, feel where you're tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. So the next one from here, I like to go into Gomukhasana. So bringing your left ankle outside your right hip, right ankle outside the left hip. So see if you can sit up and then drop both hips into the ground. Yeah. So we're not doing the Ashtanga underneath one, more no, of the no. yeah, traditional. Just, yeah, just the getting uh, cool. into the hips again. One more time, inhale, extend, exhale, reach forward. Here, since we've already done the straight one, we can explore a bit and just walk it to the left. By coming off of my knee, to the side of my knee, yeah. or I'm trying to stay my chest on my knee. You're trying to, most importantly, stretch the hands forward. Uh -huh. And at the same time, with the exhales, visualize or feel like you're grounding the hip yeah, back. I'm going there. So as you stretch forward, Trying to, because it's pretty difficult to do that action, but trying to drop the hip back into the earth. Mm. And then from here, we walk to the left. You can be on the fingertips or, no, first this one, stretching the side. So either on the fingertips or on the forearms, just watch me for a moment. Like Pashvakonasan, swinging the arm from under and just stretching to the side. Nice. Yeah. Mm. And then again, focusing on sinking that hip down and almost feeling like you're trying to stretch the hand in the opposite direction, extending through the arm, wrapping the arm inward. Okay, and you've come down on the forearm. Yeah, so it can be on the forearms or on the fingertips, whatever works for you, yeah. Extending through the fingertips, you can look under your armpit. On the inhale, open up the chest. On the exhale, make sure you ground that right hip back. Stay there for a few moments. After a few um, 20 to 30 seconds, round your spine a little bit because it also feels good in the back of the body. And just walk your hands, flexing the spine to get a nice stretch in the back in your QL quadratus. Again, stretch to the left. Slightly draw in the navel so you can get this kind of rounding action. And then drop your right forearm on the ground or be on the right fingertips, whatever feels comfortable. Swing the left arm from underneath. Extend through the fingertips, gaze under the armpit and then look at the tip of the middle finger. Hold it there for a few seconds feel like you're really drawing and extending out of that left hip joint. If possible, push the left hip into the earth and in the opposite direction, stretch through the fingertips. If it feels comfortable in your neck after a while, you can just allow the neck to hang. And just see what feels, so instead of looking up, if it feels uncomfortable in the neck, just look front or look down. And then again slowly, 
round your spine, come to the side. This time we are going to go into a little bit of a twisting action. So taking the left arm, push the left arm into the right knee. Keep using that pushing action to twist and look over the back shoulder. On the inhale, extend the spine. On the exhale, go a little bit into that twist. Again, inhale, extending the spine. Exhale, use the left elbow to push into the right knee to look over. Keep pulling that right hip back. One more breath here and then slowly release. Look front and release. Mm, nice. I really like that because I'm particularly tight in my yeah. QLs and yeah, on the yeah, sides, yeah. but Me a too. lot of people are. Me too. Yeah, so yeah. it's nice to get that yeah. side bend in there. And then you mm. can also play around with this movement. So either you can just work on getting a lot of thoracic twisting yeah. and just try to square your hips, so pushing the right hip forward but trying to twist in the upper back or if you're feeling it more in the hip joint, then you can just allow the right hip to kind of pull back, Move which will then bit. give you a stretch in the side of the hip mm. and the outer thigh. Mm, nice. Now from here, we can either just switch or we can go up. Uh, it's not very oh, thin and not very see. passive, but it's just nice and fun. And then from here, slowly drop down if you can with control. A little bit more gracefully than I did, hopefully. <laughs> but that was your first time. You didn't <laughs> even know what was coming like up. Lucky I so. didn't fall over, yeah. <laughs> but that's what I love about you, Stu, that you're open to Ready to do it. Yeah, Look at the difference in the size of our knees, though. Like, this is like a huge cow knee. <laughs> Yours is a little delicate foal knee. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not true. Um, as you can see, I'm pretty tight in this, uh, in this specific position. one. Yeah. So same thing again. Um, first, we just take a long inhale, stretch the hands forward. Exhale, reach. Stay here for a few breaths. Feel like you're breathing into the back body. Breathing into the hips. And then walk your hands to the right. And then walk to the side, either be on the forearm or on the fingertips. Swing the left arm from underneath. If it feels like you lose the grounding as you uh, go down on the forearm, just be on the fingertips. If you can, keep that grounding action of the left hip, then sink down into your forearm. Wrap the arm inward. If it feels like you're having pressure in the neck, yeah. So this action with your upper arm and then extend through the fingertips. If it feels like it's too much in the neck, just allow the neck to be relaxed or just look straight ahead. And again, after a few breaths, round your spine, go to the other side. Same thing. Take a moment, stretching diagonally, dropping the right hip back into the earth. Slightly rounding the spine to get a stretch in the back. And then dropping the left arm on the ground, forearm or the left fingertips. Stretching in the side. And then again to come out of it, round the spine, come back to center and slowly come all the way up. Hmm. I'm just going to include hmm. a tricep stretch here mm -hmm. because again, I feel it's something that gets quite tight for some people in the Ashtanga practice. So you can wrap your left arm in, doesn't matter whichever arm. Either stay here or take the other hand from behind and grab. Yeah. As you do that action, become mindful that you could be compensating for a lack of flexibility in your tricep but pushing your ribs out. Mm. So make sure you drop your ribs back down towards the navel, yet open up the tricep. Again, yeah. Lift your elbow up towards the ceiling and slightly drop the ribs back towards the belly button. Hold it there for a few moments. Keep lifting up the heart on the inhale. On the exhale, feel like the bottom of the sternum is sinking back towards the navel. So 
you're not overarching your spine. And then very slowly release. We should have done the same arm stretch on the other, on side, the other side, but let's do one little bit more of up, turn. God, it's hard to actually stand after you've been down there for a while, let alone anything else. Yeah. Same thing on the other side, hug in the right tricep, hold it there for a few moments. If you feel like you're very tight in this position, you're having to overarch, just stay with the first stretch. If that feels comfortable, take the other hand from behind, grab. As you do that action, again, connect back, drop the ribs back towards the navel. So feel like your sternum is lifting up, but the ribs are dropping down towards the navel. So you're not overarching in your back. You can visualize on the inhale, prana or energy up, moving towards the center of the heart. On the exhales, visualizing the energy moving back towards the pelvic floor and just finding that balance between the two. And then very slowly, when you feel like you stretched enough, then you can slowly release. Nice. Yeah. And for people that just find it hard even to sit like this, yeah. can they, they sit can up on a cushion? They can place a bone still. Yeah, 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 yeah. or a cushion, cushion under yeah. the bum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. totally. Yeah. yeah. So now we can go into some hip flexor stretches okay, because cool. again I feel this is something that can get quite tight in the Ashtanga practice because we're doing these jump back, jump throughs, stuff which can kind of, you know, overactivate your hip flexors. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's important to release them so you can have good back bends. Oh, do you want me to give you some space? Yeah. So we're going to just uh, start with a more yin kind of a hip flexor stretch and then get a little bit more specific. So you can start the first one. This is the easiest, simplest one, doesn't require any activation, just allowing the hips to sink. I just let my neck, uh, allow my neck to hang for the first 10 or 20 seconds so that I can really allow the, firstly to relax the body and then secondly just to kind of start pushing a little bit forward. Do you want to do it with me? Mm. You can use the mat. We've got another one. Uh, assistant will throw us a mat, <laughs> won't they? Or maybe they won't. Assistant? <laughs> should, I, should we stagger a little bit or this is Yeah, fine? otherwise I'll completely block you. I, go I behind can be a little bit even. forward. No, this is good like this. Okay. this can be yeah. yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. I like this easy yoga. Hmm. Yeah, so you're just starting off with the first position. So is your torso resting on your thigh yeah, at the yeah. moment? Yeah, at the first one, the first two, three, I'm just totally letting go hmm. and trying not to kind of hold on too much or nothing specific, just pushing the hips forward and holding it there. Do you feel anything? Mm -hmm. like so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of feeling like the, hip flex, the hips are s pushing forward. Staying there for 20 counts. And you're not worrying too much about what you're doing with your sacrum or your no, pelvis at no, this stage, no, just, no. Chi just I'm chilling. I'm just chilling, exactly. Okay, cool. I'm just finding the spot and just yeah. focusing on it, breathing into it and just kind of totally chilling. Nice. And then the second one, for some people I feel like the second one, if they, if they have pretty tight hip flexors, when they come up they start overarching mm -hmm. the spine. So they can stick with the first one, but then if that feels comfortable they come into the second. You can push your left knee forward. Slightly squeeze your glutes just because mm -hmm. that gives you a little bit more of the hip flexor to release. Slightly squeeze, push the hip forward and then let go. You can stay here for a few moments. And then slowly, using opposite arm, opposite leg, grabbing that back foot. Uh, sorry, for a same arm, same leg, mm -hmm. grabbing the back foot, pulling in. Yep, sir. Yeah, 
So you can use a bit of PNF stretching here. So for five counts, I resist with, I squeeze my glutes, I resist and push the foot back. For one, two, three, four, five, then I exhale, let go and release. Mm -hmm. Again, for five counts, I resist, two, three, four, five, let go and release. One last time, for one, two, three, four, five, let go and release. And then hold that there. And then let go. Same thing, opposite side. You can slightly let the left foot turn out 45 degrees with the opposite hand. Pulling in. Again, pushing the hip slightly forward. Do you feel it in the hip flexor? Yeah, yeah. And the quadricep? Mm -hmm. Actually, I feel it more intense going this way than the other way. Yeah, me and too. And I've never actually tried it this way. Yeah, me actually, too. Actually, you've got your hand wrapped the other way too. How does that feel? Mm. Yeah, me too. I feel it more when I do it this mm. way. It just hits another spot, I yeah. feel. And then release, come back to center. So I like to hold that again for 30 seconds each. Back as you start. Yeah. yeah. And then hug the right tricep in. So same side as that, as the leg which is behind. Take the other hand from behind. The stretch, this is good for back bending. Mm, that's why I'm having difficulty. <laughs> Feel like you're lifting out of the pelvis. Two more counts. Squeeze your glutes, slightly sink forward. Feel like you're lifting the skin out of the pelvis. One more. Squeeze your glutes, lift out of the pelvis. And then slowly release. Exhale, stretch the front hamstring. For people who have any kind of tightness in the hamstring, they can just stay here. Or if they feel comfortable, flex the foot and go as deep as possible. I like to move a little bit between those two just to get some heat and warmth. So on the inhale, I just push my hips forward. Then on the so exhale. I can see I need to keep readjusting. Ah, maybe I just need to push yeah. my ass back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice. Your hamstrings are really flexible. Mm. Again, hips forward. Hamstring. One last time. Hips forward and hamstring. And then from here, you can push back into a downward facing dog. Just a nice lazy dog. Okay, now from here, we step the right leg forward. Yeah. Same stretch on the left side. So we start with the left hip flexor. First one just to warm up, nice and gentle, relax the body, relax the nervous system, don't have to do much, just stay here. Just letting gravity do most of the work right now. And then after around 30 seconds to a minute coming up, pushing the right knee forward. Squeezing the glute a little bit to sink the hips forward. Again, slightly squeeze the glute, sink the hip forward. Stay here one more. Sink the hips forward. And if you can, same arm, same leg. Grab, pull. So using a bit of that PNF stretch, squeeze the glute, push the foot away from the hip for one, two, three, four, five, and then sink again. Push the leg out, away from the hip. Squeeze the glute, squeeze the hamstring, and then sink. Let go. One last time. Squeeze out, two, three, four, five, and sink. And then switch to the other side, same thing. You can let the front foot turn out around 45 degrees. Grab with the other arm, pull. And it is much easier if you switch that hand around. I was trying to do it the same like... Yeah, like this. Yeah, is it's hard. You but if you swap it around, it yeah, makes it a lot yeah. easier. That's true. Mm, but that's, yeah, that's a favorite now. I really like this. this is yeah, intense. it's intense, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel it too. Yeah. Yeah, pull and then release. Now from here, same position. Hug the left tricep in. Take the other arm from behind. Pull the left tricep 
<coughs> up towards the ceiling, feel like you're lifting your ribs out of the pelvic floor. So this is good for back bending. Stay a few more. Release. From here, inhale into the hip flexor, exhale, hamstring. Three more times, inhale into the hip flexor. You can start opening up the chest. Exhale, flex the back front foot. Two more times, inhale, exhale. One last time, inhale, exhale. And from here, push back into a downward facing dog. And then drop onto the knees. Yeah, that's it. So yeah. now we can do some uh, shoulder stretches. Yeah, great. Yeah, so we'll have to use the wall. Yeah. Okay, so we're just relocating because we want to use this bit of wall, but you could use a chair, a window ledge, or anything that gives you a bit of height, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, so, so we're into we the shoulders. We're going to get really specific in opening the shoulders. Um, because I feel like if your shoulders are really tight, that's going to kind of compromise your entire practice, you know, starting from your downward dog. Because yeah. if you don't have the shoulder opening, you're going to compensate with wrong patterns, which then ends up, you know, leading to other kinds of... Pain, weaknesses, yeah, everything exactly, else. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So we're working a bit on stability and opening in the shoulders. So to keep the stability of the action in the shoulders, you're going to use a block mm -hmm. and make sure your elbows are squeezing that block so that the elbows are not allowed to wing out. Right. Yeah. So keeping, you can use a block or a book. If you don't have a block, you can use a book. Squeeze the block with both elbows. Make sure your elbows don't wing out. Yeah. And then walk your knees back. Now you can grab another block or a bottle or a book with the other, yeah, with the hands. And, and that just keeps them nicely spaced, doesn't exactly. it? Because otherwise yeah. they tend to roll in. Yeah. Like yeah. And first action, which is most important, is squeezing the block with the elbows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then second action is you want to try to reach the chest towards the ground. But as you do that, make sure you're squeezing that block firmly. Every time you feel like you're letting the elbows wing out, squeeze the block. Then let the ribs move towards the ground. Then reset so you're not really arching too much on your lower back by slightly tucking under. Again, reach the chest towards the ground, squeeze the elbows into that block, and then reset, slightly curl under, just a subtle curling under. One last time, go down with the chest, ribs towards the ground, squeeze the block with the elbows, slightly tuck under. And see if you can hold it there. And then come up. So this one, it's quite intense because mm. you're also obviously, it's not just flexibility, it's also stability and yeah. you know, your nervous system does get a bit triggered. Mm. So you, I think 30 seconds is a good amount of time to hold. That's more than, yeah. Even for a stiff guy like me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think 30 seconds is important. So I would say, you know, if you have shoulder issues, you just, you know, make sure you use a watch and do 30 seconds. Okay. And that I think is the best thing because it's going to really open up your shoulders in a downward dog. Open up your shoulders in all the back bends, you know, Urva Dhanurasana, Kapotasana, all of that. Also, if you're working into inversions like Pinchamayurasana, headstand, handstand, all of these positions require you to be able to have good flexibility and stability. Yeah, yeah. Second position, it's slightly more intense, but again, it's really good for your downward dog and again for all those positions. Palms touching each other. Yeah. One more time, try to create the external rotation. So feel like if you had if you had a pen, you just draw arrows. So mm -hmm. the skin of the upper arm is going outward. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Creating that external rotation of the upper arm, trying to reach the chest down. Even if it's a subtle movement, that's fine. Don't go for a big movement. Again, create that external rotation. Go down a little bit. Keep setting the shoulders, external rotation, reach down. One more time, external rotation, reach down. 
again keep doing that and then slightly curl under the tailbone. S visualize your chest moving down towards the ground, armpits moving down towards the ground, but the tailbone is curling under so you are not overarching in the lower back. Try not to hold your breath and then slowly come up. Did you feel it? Yeah, yeah. It's intense, intense right? Yeah. This one is a bit more intense. And so, so for someone that's broader in the shoulders, like I am relative to you, yeah, yeah, you still can keep your arms So take a them a little wider. bit apart. Yeah, 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 yeah. I felt I needed just a bit more space. Yeah. I'm just showing a third variation. Yeah. Uh, you can s just do the first one, I think is very important. And then yeah. you can go between the second one like this and the third one like this. Okay. Because this one forces you to be to do that external rotation with right. the upper arm. So again, you can grab a block. This time with straight arms. I think this one is again like an essential for most practitioners. Uh -huh. um, also for handstands, for back bends, an amazing shoulder opener. So external rotation, set the position, yeah. straighten your elbows, straighten, straighten, straighten more if you can. Go down, walk your knees back, go down, and then slightly curl under again. External rotation, squeeze the block with your palms, keep wrapping the upper arm outward, go down, slightly curl under. One last time, external rotation, slightly tuck under, reach with your chest down. You can use a little bit of a dynamic movement here, slightly tuck under and hold it there. Again, 20 seconds, 30 seconds is what you should be holding it for. And then slowly come up. Nice. Yeah, yeah it could feel all it's of It's intense, mm. right? And do you ever use a strap or not? Do you think you need a strap to control the elbows? Because yeah. I, I know yeah. like mine are really yeah, get yeah, pulled yeah. out. So I feel if your elbows tend to keep doing this action, yeah. it's also firstly resetting your nervous system. Yeah. Because we saw why, like, everything becomes a habit, mm. right? Even if you're physically able to do this, because the nervous system has got wired to go into an easier uh, yeah. neurological pathway, it wants to keep doing that. So doing this is almost like resetting something, yeah. which is why it's important to go small, 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 instead of just going really big. Yeah. Um, the strap helps, but I would say if you're using the strap, think about trying to make the strap loose yeah, by rather squeezing than just the elbows pushing, away yeah. from the strap because nice. I see people using the strap and then they're just doing this into the mm, strap, the which is actually the work. not yeah. exactly, yeah. it's not making you do the work. The mm. most important thing is you want to do this work. The strap is giving you the feedback that you're doing something wrong, yeah, nice. right? Yeah. So I, yeah, the strap is great uh, just to keep giving you the feedback, like suppose there was a teacher holding you and grabbing your arms like that, yeah. the strap is telling you, okay, you need to squeeze away from that yeah. strap. Yeah. yeah, nice. This one I think is a game changer mm. for me, mm. because when you start doing this, and you can really feel, right, like you your right activation, into the yeah, into the rotator activation yeah. opening up. Mm. And those two, that one and this one, I feel if you do it every day, you know, mm. I feel like in a month, it's going to really change your back bends and your handstands nice. or, or, you know, pincha or whatever it is Anything. that you're working on. Anytime even you take your arm up into flexion, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Really? Mm. Even like a headstand, I notice so many people, you know, and they, they're just doing this, mm. which is then setting everything off. Mm. Mm. So I feel this one is like my the number gold. one. My the number gold. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's the one that good. you should do every day. And good. the hip openers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that w took what half an hour? Maybe what did you yeah. spend a day? Half an hour on that sort of thing? Yeah, I don't do everything every day. Okay. So depending on like what I'm going to do that day. So if yeah. I'm doing more like leg behind the head poses. Yes. Um, I just spend a few minutes before just you know sitting like this as if I was in meditation. Yeah. If I was going to do a lot of back bends, then I just do more the hip flexor stretches. And if I was going to work you know on really deep back bends, and I was going to do um, handstands, handstands or, or whatever, yeah. I do like five minutes, you know, that one takes like a minute between It doesn't take long, does yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. So it depends on where you're at, what mm. you're working on, what your little spots are. 
But if you're just tight overall, I think this little sequence can really, you know. Find time for all of it, help. I think. Yeah. It's like what is like prehab, right? So yeah. that you don't have to go for, to come to you. Yeah, to, yeah well, so maybe <laughs> don't do it after all, yeah. Because <laughs> <'Cause laughs> it's yeah. like you're avoiding all those things ca that can it's lead true, to an injury, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So much can be done. Yeah, I mm. prefer like just having, a, you know, quality practice with a mm. bit of this kind of stuff added in rather yeah. than doing too much and just injuring yourself. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. That was brilliant. Thanks so much, Divika. And so have a play with that. Any questions, you know, you can post in the comments if you're not quite clear about something, and we'll try and uh, clear it up. But that was brilliant. Yeah, thank you so thank much, Divika. Thank you. So.